Today on this old house, with a herringbone floor, it's all on how you start. How popular are the pizza ovens? They are very popular. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. And it's layout day here for plants in the front yard. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a big one. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> the money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house. Hey Doug. Good morning, Kevin. Well, as you can see, we are about a month away from completing this project here in Narragansett, Rhode Island. We've got the plants that have arrived here in the front yard. Kevin, how are you? Hello, Jen Nawada is going to be here a little later. She's going to get those all laid out so we can start getting them into the ground. And on the inside, well, the plaster is up. Aaron, how are you? We've got the uh, trim work going up as well. and. We've got floors going down too. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm doing all right, how about yourself? Pretty good. Wow, those look terrific. Yeah, this is an engineered oak flooring in a herringbone pattern going on this entire first floor. Very right? nice. You will save us some, right? I'll save you a couple of boards. All right, I'll be back to check on that. So out back, we have got a lot going on. Come on out back here with me. Now, you may remember, there's a whole bunch of things. We've got a, a putting green going over here. We've got a shed going over there. We've got an outdoor shower that's gonna hide this pad where the generator goes. And then most of this in here is gonna be hardscaping. You're gonna be able to come right up to our plunge pool right there. That went in last week and looks beautiful. Over here, there's gonna be some wood that goes down for a deck. More of this hardscaping taking us to sort of a seating, dining area. We've got a cabana on this side. This will articulate itself open. We've got some of the limestone that has gone down. This was actually quarried in Indiana and showed up soon. And only a little bit less far than that is uh, Scott, who came to us from Ohio, right? Yes. Well, we okay. appreciate that. And look what you brought us. Look at this thing. Yeah, this is a brick oven that we've got over top of a fireplace. Oh, that's why it's so huge. Yep. So wood-burning fireplace down here? It is a gas burner. Gas burner. Yes, sir. And then, and gas, then a wood burner. Wood burner. Uh, uh, in there. here in the brick oven. Boy, that is beautiful. I want to talk about that. And that's going to be the centerpiece of an entire outdoor kitchen, which you've sort of got laid out for us right here. Right. We've got seat walls. We've got grill island. Grill island. So what's the construction? Metal frame? This is 18 gauge galvanized steel. Yeah. Then over top of that, we come in with our magnesium oxide backer board. Magnesium oxide. Is that like a cement board? Yes, it is. But different. It's um, better fire resistant properties. Beautiful. Okay. And better for outdoor applications. And so on top of this, you're going to put on some sort of a stone for then, it? Yeah, there's yeah. a stone veneer that goes over top. So we got a little bit of a cabinet here. Some appliances, that's a double burner, and then a grill. Grill right there. So Scott, how much weight are we talking about right there? This is about 2,400 pounds. Wow, that's a beast. And so does this make sense to ship these things from Ohio? You guys do this typically? It does, yeah. We ship all over. But we build it out of steel, and steel has an excellent strength to weight ratio. So we're able to do this, and what would normally be if we built this out of masonry, we'd be about 6,000 pounds. Here we're only 2,400. Right. So we're able to get it on conventional trailers. We're able to use conventional strapping uh, and conventional machinery. How popular are the pizza ovens? They are very popular. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I think people really enjoy the opportunity to get together and do something totally unique in their backyard. Yeah, well, now more than ever, spending time outside. So right. if you can you know, have the entire family or friends out cooking, why not? Exactly right. So Scott, I know you guys are not uh, responsible for the facing. It's a good thing because <laughs> a lot of weight. Uh, right. The homeowner has chosen this natural limestone to match the uh, patio, although it's got a tumbled look. And it comes to us pre-cut. Our mason will install it. They've got some corners all ready to go. So those will fit right in there. The beauty of the scratch coat finish is it can be finished any way you want, with brick, with stucco, with stone like this, full okay. bed stone. Well, that's looking good already. I suspect like all prefab, Scott, the fact that you guys fabricate off-site, drop it in here, makes the whole process go much faster. It does. I would anticipate that uh, um, an install 
like this, if it was done with masonry, it would go in and in about two weeks you'd be at this point. So two weeks, what you guys just did in a couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours we can set it in place, connect it together, yeah. and we're ready to finish. All right, well let's work from the top down. So you got the beautiful cast iron door going in. That is terrific. Thermometer on the outside, so I'm telling us it's for cooking. Right, so you want to put your wood in here and fire up the uh, the brick is really what we're trying to heat up. Yeah. So we want to get that heated up and then we can push the uh, ash or the coals over to uh, the side and, and put our entree right in yeah. for cooking. So that all heats up, close it down. And then yeah. you've got grates here. You can control the airflow, yeah. which means you can airflow. control the temperature. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And now this is separate. So this is, I can see the gas line in the back corner right there. No flu. This no is just flu. going to vent right out it's to here. It's going to vent right out the front. The homeowner has a gas log they're going to install here. So that's ambiance, maybe a little bit of heat, but you can turn that on for Definitely. just a second or two. Yep. Well, that is terrific. Okay, so it goes in fast. It's going to save the contractor a ton of time. Yes. And we'll finish it off, and it's going to look beautiful. Yes. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming from Ohio. Thank you very much. All right, Our pleasure. Thank you. So our homeowners have chosen a wood floor pre-finished both here in the living room and also in the kitchen. And Jonathan is Jeff's go-to flooring guy. Hey Jonathan, how's it going? Hey, hi Tom. What's the plan here? Well, the plan is to get all this first floor with a heavy mop pattern all throughout the first floor. And we're going to be doing a perimeter with a border around six three quarters inches, which is that one right there. Oh yeah. That's, go. that's gonna look nice. It's gonna look amazing. Yeah, so you'll cut that in afterwards. Yes, I wanna lay the entire house first, and then I'm gonna get my measurements from the walls, and then I'm gonna cut with a nice track saw all around, and get this piece Drop doing my, my frame. And, and that'll frame out the floor really nice. That's gonna frame the entire house, really, really awesome. All right, so let's take a look at what you have here. This is, uh, looks like a white oak. It's engineered, which means that it's got a layer of plywood underneath, which I like the plywood because it's really stable and good to nail into. And it looks like the veneer at the top is about an eighth of an inch thick. So what did you do to get started here, Jonathan? Well, first of all, what I do is I sweep the entire floor and then I look for high spots and try to scrape them, make it like flat Make possible. sure everything is nice and flat. Exactly, and after that, I get this uh, moisture barrier right here. So that's gonna help me to prevent the moisture coming from the basement to the wood. That allows me to use uh, adhesive assistant and fasteners. Yeah, if you used a paper down there first, then you'd have to nail it and the paper, you know, the paper's there to kept, give exactly. a little bit of slip, but if you can glue it, that's really good because it's strong. Exactly. So the way I do it is I got my sausage gun right here mm -hmm. and I apply the, gl the glue all over this piece right here. Make sure that it's an equal amount. Yep. That way my bed layman is really, really good. Yep, yep. When I have this done, I'm gonna line up. I already put these pieces right here to secure my piece not to move it. So those are your two temporary blocks. Exactly, this one is a perfect square. That's gonna allow me to make a nice straight line over here. And this one is just a supporter. That way my other end, it won't be moving and jiggling. Right. Because I can lose my measurements. Yeah, exactly. Well, when you lay in a pattern like this or any kind of a detail, you have to make sure that that is exactly what it should be. In this case, it would be 90 degrees. Exactly. Yeah, because if the first couple of pieces are off, then it's going to telegraph and it's going to get worse down the other end. Exactly. So once I got this secure, I make sure that my piece is nice and tight, as you can see right here. Yep. It's nice and tight. It's secure right here. I'm gonna use a finish gun to nail my first two rows because if I use my, uh, yep. my other gun, it's so strong that's gonna move the piece. I'm gonna place the second one. Same process. All right, so that's an adhesive. Uh, why are you using the adhesive with the nails? Well, the reason is because we are near the water here. The ocean is right a couple of blocks from here. So that's gonna create a lot of moisture through the windows and everywhere. Yep. So we, got, we wanna avoid any kind of squeakies or movement. And that's why I use the glue, as you can see right here. Yep. And that's gonna make this piece like. Well, gluing it and nailing it is always a good practice. Exactly. Anyways, and you're right, it does help eliminate squeaks. And you don't want the floor creaking or squeaking later on. So I'm gonna use the finish unit for the second time, just to secure. Yep. 
Again, you don't want to take the chance of that moving, so the lighter air. From that. Yep. Yeah, that pushes it nice and tight, but snug. And, and everything I, just kept. Yeah. Line up. Right. So for my third piece, I'm going to use fasteners now. So that's a two inch staple also? Exactly, with a half inch crown. Right, that'll really hold well. The two legs going in, nice. And it won't split the wood. Exactly. Well, I would say that you're moving quite quickly here, Jonathan. A couple of minutes on the front with the layout, and now all these pieces fit together perfect. Perfectly fine. I'd guess you have about three days to get the border down, and you'll be done. Something around that, yes. Nice job, Jonathan. Thank you. Up here on the second floor, the original house ended right there. This is above the new mudroom entryway, and then this master bedroom is above our two-car garage. Now, last week we started deciding on some of the finishes for the first floor, and this week it's time for the second floor finishes, including the master bathroom. Hey, Kristen, Cassie, hey, nice Hi. to see you both. You too. Big, luxurious master bath. This is going to be beautiful. Thank um, you. So what did you tell Kristen you wanted? To be honest, a white bathroom. Clean, okay. simple. Yeah. And will it be all white? No. No. <laughs> we definitely want to bring in some of the elements we saw downstairs. So Calcutta Cold is a theme that you'll see throughout on our countertop, some of our tiles. Where does this so go? So this will be on the floor here. Okay. So that's our floor. See in a cabinet door right here. Is this the base for the vanity? Yeah, so that's our biggest percentage in here, which will be the white, which only the white, white that's in here. This is the sink, obviously. This is our pop of color that we're gonna have in the room. You'll so, see a little bit of a blue gray, yep. and then gold is gonna be our accent. That's the accent right there. Reminding me of a seashell. Oh yeah. yeah. And is this um, sit above the countertop, this is a vessel? It can do either a three-quarter mount, which we're doing, which is going to sit a little bit inside of the mm -hmm. countertop, gotcha. or you can be sat right on top. All right. Gold accents, which you can obviously see in the fixtures right there. Oh, that is beefy. I love that. So that is our pop here, is doing the gold finishes. Very classic. You'll see that in the plumbing. We're going to use that in the sconces that are above. Comes right out of the wall. It does. And then you'll have your, you know, your hot and your cold, and you have the gooseneck faucet there. And then this little jewel right here, these are our pulls for the uh, the cabinet doors on the vanity. We're going to do crystal knobs, but with the gold. Um, be a gold finish again. Be a gold finish. That would be gold instead yeah. of the uh, the silver that I'm seeing right there. Beautiful. Okay. Little bedazzler. You find a little sparkle here, a little bedazzler. sparkle there. I wanted some bedazzle. <laughs> Uh, floor, vanity, uh, sinks, what do we got for the walls? Look at the big beautiful shower right yes. here. You know, we saw this um, last week with Richard. The drain, we love this, right? Instead of in the center, we've got it up against the wall uh, in the corner right there. And don't you, you had steam in this shower there too, is. right? Yeah. A couple steam, couple overhead. I know, a lot of a lot of things going on. The dazzle in here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Forget you it. have speakers, you can dance oh. too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you notice, we're doing a lot of curbless showers this nowadays. Is great. Right, easy. Where access. you just transition right from outside to inside. So, what about wall surfaces? I'm seeing two more samples right here. Big one is which way? Sort of a. So that is a. We're going to do a brick pattern, but it's an oversized subway. Yeah. Uh, that's our field on both these outer walls, and then our accent wall is right behind you there. So field this wall on the one opposite, but then this is the accent right here this time? Exactly. And that actually is, is more of a circular pattern. You don't see the full pattern in there, but there's oh, a yeah. circular pattern that will go behind in that niche. It'll go all over that wall, and then it will be framed out with a jam stock. Uh, do we have colors to pick in terms of paint for this room we at do. all? And really, I think that what we want to do is, since everything is so white, oh boy. that I'd like to match a neutral color, but that brings out the blue in the sink. Let me just throw those up there so you can take a look. Yeah, you can see that there are different colors right there. Which one are you leaning like towards? this one. Okay, we got a winner right here. And if you look on the back, it'll tell us the big reveal. <laughs> what is it? Gray owl. 
Okay, well, decisions keep us moving forward, so that is great. And Kristen, I think we're going to have a beautiful bathroom here. Thanks. I know. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot going on here in this yard, and especially the plantings just had a delivery of about 200 plants. So what I'm going to do is start placing them. This here is a boxwood. And when I like to place the, I like to place the first plant and then get it into scale of the area. So I know that there's three boxwood going to be here, but I like to place it off a fixed structure. So it's away from the foundation. And then when I have all three here, we can adjust them. Hey, Christian, can you grab me two more boxwood? So let's evenly space these out. One, two, three. And I picked boxwoods for this area several reasons it's it's a very durable plant uh, it's evergreen the homeowners didn't want it to be a deciduous plant and have all the leaves fall in the winter and in this light location it's it's a perfect plant okay christian four more over here we're gonna line them up the wall so a couple things could happen here um, you could either keep these sculpted to individual boxwoods or some people like to grow them together as a hedge so it's really up to the homeowner and the style of what they want here this is all bed area and I'm gonna put a Japanese maple. Can you bring that over here? Thank you. Uh, this is a Japanese maple, an Acer palmatum dissectum cultivar. It's, a, it's gonna grow in like an umbrella habit kind of shape. And so what I wanna do is center it in this bed, kind of look at the porch, look, you know, just so it's like centered and it has a good balance in the bed. And then underneath it, if we could bring some of those ground cover, these are an evergreen ground cover, cover called Juniper. And the homeowners didn't want to see all bare ground during the winter. So what this is going to do, all these plants are going to grow together and, and create like a nice green carpet. And then let's take a look at the front. Okay, so up here on these pallets, we have privet and I, we ordered over a hundred of them. And what they're gonna do is line the whole front of the property and run down to the side and they're gonna terminate where the fence begins and because the homeowners wanted a privacy screen. So the great thing with privet is you could adjust it to any height. We have some height uh, constrictions on the corner, so we have to keep it down for people turning onto the street. Otherwise, it's gonna grow in as a nice dense hedge together. So up here in the front, we have, we're going to continue the theme with boxwood and add another plant element in there. We have little limelight hydrangeas. The homeowners wanted evergreen, but they also wanted color. So combining the two of those together, it's going to be perfect. So I'm going to grab two of these. Christian, you grab those two. I'm going to space them out. One here. And then at the end, and then your other one could go, yeah, like right there. So again, we want these enough off the foundation that they have room to grow. And then we have the little limelight hydrangeas. I'm gonna put one and then two in the middle. So this is a great plant. It's the dwarf form of limelight hydrangea. And so it's called little limelight and it's gonna get to be about three feet tall. Um, it blooms in August and continues into September and it's this brilliant white. So that'll add a spark of color here. And then when we go to edge the bed line, we're going to leave at least two, two and a half feet for perennials. So what we have today is daylilies. We have happy returns. This is a great performer. It's a constant rebloomer and it's yellow. And another great plant is Excuse me, this is Echinacea, and this one is called Cheyenne Spirit, and it has oranges and yellows, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to place them, see how it looks. Last week, our plunge pool was installed. The process, it only took a couple of hours because the pool was fabricated off-site at a factory and then just dropped here into an existing hole. Now, since then, there's some work that's been done. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Good, how are you? All right, so the work that happened since the pool itself went in was what? 
Well, what they've done is they've insulated the pool. All around the perimeter, all around below the perimeter grade. of the pool. They've run all the plumbing lines and stuff over to the future location for the filter and equipment. Yep. We've come in and actually installed the retainers tracks that go on top of the pool wall. These tracks which right are this, here. Yes, this piece right here, which yep. receives our track. Track for the cover. For the cover to run on. Gotcha. That, that we installed prior to the concrete that is going to support the coping stones on the finished product. Oh, uh, okay. So let's talk about that cover because you got it right here behind you. Yeah, this is an acrylic 18-gauge um, vinyl with an acrylic backing, and you can actually see the webbing in there that reinforces it. It's beefy. Yes, very strong. It can hold up to about uh, 480 pounds. So this is actually meant so you could stand on it if you had to. Absolutely. It's designed so if a kid or somebody was to walk onto the cover, yeah. it, it would support their weight and they wouldn't get fall into the pool. In my town, if you install a pool, you're required to install a fence around it, yes. and that's basically to protect people from wandering in and getting hurt. Correct. That's a barrier code that's required so nobody could fall in the pool. Does, does this play into that? In a lot of towns, it does, because if it meets the ASTM standard, then you're exempt from the fence code. Oh, nice. Yes. Which is the case here. So we can Which put is this the case in, here. we don't Correct. have to put a fence in. Yep, no fence is necessary. And uh, added benefit is that's going to open and close automatically, which explains all the hardware Correct. here. So yes. walk me through yep. this. this. Yep, so this is our spy unit mechanism, which is smaller because it is a smaller pool. Sure. Um, this has a set of rope rails that when we activate it, actually will roll the rope up, which runs in these tracks. The rope being what? The, the rope is actually the stuff here. Oh, I see, the rope yep. that pulls the cover. Yes, this pulls the cover out. Gotcha. It's, uh, I believe, like a 2,800 pound tinsel strength rope sure. that goes through our tracks and into a pulley. So pulls the rope back, which pulls the cover, the cover over out. the thing. Correct. Right. And then this is the tube the fabric gets mounted to, and then it actually retracts by turning the tube and draws the filter the fabric back into the housing. A lot of industry. You guys are in the middle of putting it down, so I'll let you get back to it. I want to see this whole thing go in. Sounds good. All right, we're going to get ready to pull the rope through the tracks now. last thing we got to do today is we're going to be installing these brackets, which we've already installed the base on. So that's to what? Hold the stone? This holds a stone. Over the edge. That there. goes across here. And you see, once the coping stones are done, they're going to come right out to this point. Wow. And you won't see any of this stuff is in there. That is remarkable. Well, it's a really cool system. and It's going to be a sharp look when it's done. Yes, it absolutely is. Rob, thank you very much. Thank PJ, you. appreciate the help. All right, well, we got a lot of progress going on here in the backyard, and next week it is all about hardscape, because that'll be going down. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for This Old House here in Narragansett, Rhode Island. Next time on This Old House. These stained glass windows are an original architectural detail to this house, and now we're getting ready to trim them, and it's going to be a little tricky. Let me show you what we have to do. Well, Ben, every time I see one of your jobs, I am just amazed. I mean, look at this. It's so neat and perfect. It's really beautiful. Thank you very much. It's how I was taught to do it a long time ago, and uh, I still enjoy it, and it's kind of become a calling card it's for our great. work around here. It's so. not typical. <laughs>